Hey guys, we're downtown Vancouver today. We're at a store called Vintage Iron. It's actually the flagship store for North 49 brands. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, great. This is Josh. It was kind of neat. I, I didn't realize they carried these like stand up paddle boards and all kinds of cool like vintage themed e-bikes. That's the Ruffian. Excited to check that one out someday. Back here, we got even more stuff. I think I saw like Super 73. There is so much cool stuff. And this is a, such a great location. So as Josh said, and this is Tom, right? Uh, yeah, how you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great, man. This is, this is, and scooters. I don't want to forget those, right? Yeah, yeah, something for everybody. Kick something. scooters. <laughs> so Synergy is another like brand that's part of the whole uh, North 49. This is the model we're focused on today. And it's called the Kahuna. We've got one set up over here that was really, I, I was like, wow, look at this. You got aluminum alloy fenders. That's an optional upgrade. Rear rack says it's rated at 25 kilograms. Pretty burly on that rack right there. This is the charger. It's just a standard two amp, you know, pretty, I think it's like a pound and a half. They've also got white. Uh, it's kind of a matte or satin-ish color. And then there's a blue one. You said the blue ones have sold out. We can barely keep them in stock. They're hot. It'd be the same kind of matte color, but in a nice blue. Fantastic. So this is what it looks like when it's folded down. I do have the specs back at the website. So you can see like the length, width, height. And of course, you know, if you take the seat out, it gets a little bit uh, more compact and depending on how you fold the bars. But I think this is pretty standard and Josh offered to help me uh, install the battery. This is like 8.5 pounds right here. 48 volt, 14 amp hours so is pretty high capacity. Slides right into that main tube. And then the, the locking port right there, it's below the frame and you can see the pin coming through right there to really secure that battery. So I might be inclined to like take my keychain off and just leave that key there, but it sounds like you can lock the battery to the bike in the off position, that way no one can really use it. You can, yeah. So then it would just be a regular bike, of course, if they wouldn't have any access to the battery or the motor okay. without that key. The perfect, perfect. And he's gonna do some unfolding action here. You'll notice that there's this little support arm at the bottom and that's designed to help protect your chain ring. It's like a 54-2 chain ring, so it's pretty large. It's gonna help you hit and maintain higher top speed and it does have an aluminum alloy bash guard as well, which is nice. That double step right here where it locks in. Same thing up here. And then the one last step, if you did want to have to get in and out of the trunk, you can have that extra couple inches on the pedal. Perfect. I'm excited to check it out and do some riding. Sure. Thanks. Okay, guys, we made it to Trout Lake. What a beautiful spot. We got the Synergy Kahuna here. Did just fine on the way. I I rode for like 10 minutes and was able to cut across some of the, the dirt paths in this park and even right across the sand, no problem, because this is a fat tire bike. These are 20 by four inches, so four inches wide. And it looks like, you know, Kenda has a, a bunch of different tires and this is like the, the Gigas or something like that. There's like a little robot dude on there. If you find yourself in really soft terrain, you can lower the pressure all the way down pretty close to that five and they just spread out and they give you uh, a lot more surface area. Of course, this is going to create some like drag and resistance. You're not gonna get the best range that way, but it, it, it's really amazing what they can do. Um, so this is sort of a go anywhere bike. And I love that it's full suspension because smaller wheel diameter, you know, you've got like a higher attack angle. You sort of run into obstacles and fall down into divots much more easily than if they were uh, really wide wheels. But of course that brings the whole bike down closer to the, to the ground. It's a little bit more approachable. I was, I was a little bit surprised. I mean, this thing is, it's a little bit larger. I think they extended the seat tube up so they could get that, that angle for the rear suspension and just make it sturdy enough. They say that this thing is rated up to 300 pounds. So um, that's kind of cool. Just a little bit of a, a longer reach. We do have a telescoping stem right here. It doesn't have like a top part where it would put the handlebars even further forward. And this is a low rise. So really the only adjustable point you've got is is that extension here and it goes up to like 100 millimeters you don't want to go too far or this cable is going to start to get stretched and then it's going to impact your steering and potentially pull on the brake cables the brakes are really a highlight for me on this bike they are hydraulic three finger levers 160 millimeter rotors which is is not the biggest um you know you could have 180 millimeter rotors but again you've already got a smaller wheel size so the mechanical advantage I think it's great. And the cool thing about hydraulic disc brakes is that uh, both levers are gonna pull fairly consistently. Sometimes you're pulling on the right lever and that cable has to go a lot further to the rear brake, at least in North America. And 
you know, with, with mechanical disc brakes, they can be kind of a cable stretch or setting in and you're just pulling a little bit harder and you can get gunk into the, the wiring and stuff. And it's just a little bit more hand effort. So hydraulic disc brakes, a big upgrade. They also offer some adjustable reach. You can see there's like a little uh, bolt right there that you can kind of tighten or loosen and it'll bring that lever in or out. So, you know, three colors on this thing only one frame size, but a lot of adjustability. You heard me say it's like a 420 millimeter seat post, 33.9 millimeter diameter. That's really thick. I'm not used to seeing that. So back to the 300 pound weight rating. I mean, this is, it's a fairly burly fat tire bike. And with those, those lower wheels, it's still sort of approachable, but it's kind of comfortable because of the suspension. The suspension isn't like very adjustable back here. I, I really don't even see any branding. And I sort of guessed on the travel because it's not this distance right here. It's actually, the effective travel of this rear swing arm. Um, so I guess like 60 millimeters, cause that's kind of what I saw up here. Like this is 90 or something, but the actual travel is closer to 60. You do have compression adjust lockout with preload. So you can preload the bike if you're a heavier rider and you're just finding that it's sagging a lot, bobbing as you pedal along, you could lock it out. If you've got your tire pressure low and you don't need the extra travel, for efficiency. So there's a lot of options here. And I love that it's in the case of the black. So all the black wires and everything look really nice. They blend in, they route through. Oh, well, actually they don't. I was about to say they kind of route through that battery casing area. But um, one of the challenges with, with routing cables, especially on a folding bike is that they can kind of get pinched. So it's not such a bad thing that they're external. I'm not a huge fan of the external key that has to be left in while you're riding. And again, I would probably take these, this keychain and these extra keys off. So they wouldn't be, you know, jingling around um, potentially getting snagged as your, your your cranks and your pants go by. Um, that's that's probably one of the biggest trade-offs for me. This bike is priced at like $18.99 USD, and they've got it on sale for $24.99 right now on their website, Canadian. So I get the impression that this is one of the companies that kind of like maybe they'll throw in some extra fenders or they'll they'll drop the price and depending on the the time of the year and stuff. So you know synergy is is not a brand i'm super familiar with and it seems kind of like an in-house play by the north 49 brands and they've got the vintage iron store that's pretty cool you know it's like a local canadian thing it's a unique platform but a lot of these batteries and and components are stuff they're they're sort of like you know picked from existing uh options i don't i don't feel like this is super custom the, the biggest part for me is just that it's distributed physically in vancouver they ship free shipping by the way like pretty much the contiguous USA and Canada. So that's not too bad. The price is decent. The weight's not even really that bad if you don't have the fenders and rack. This is about 65 pounds, which for a folding fat bike and an 8.5 pound removable battery, you can really, you can drop the weight down. No quick release on either one of these wheels. Um, this is like a nine millimeter axle with just some nuts. Same thing in the rear, cause it's the Bafang hub motors going through. Uh, with some flats right here. That's a nine and a half and then 12 millimeter threaded axle itself. You'll notice that there's like this kind of washer and that's a, it's kind of a torque washer. So it fits into the dropout and, and sort of uh, follows those flat pieces. And, and this is an aluminum alloy flame frame. So the motor is pushing and it's actually pushing against the frame. And it's a powerful motor. This is 750 watt planetary geared Bafang rear hub motor rated, I think up to like 80 Newton meters. So, I have seen other companies put like a little torque arm or you know even a bigger torque arm i guess i would keep an eye on this and make sure it doesn't get loose over time especially if you're really bearing down on this thing or if you do some drivetrain maintenance because if you don't tighten it enough and that washer's not set up right it could chew into the frame and even spin around um it's not a huge issue with like a brand new bike but if you have this for a long time and you're doing some maintenance maybe you get a flat tire on the rear i don't think these have puncture protection there's no reflective sidewall stripes or anything so you know back down here to the other portion of the drivetrain shimano altus derailleur that's okay you know it's one step up from entry there's like tourney altus acera alivio dior you know it really goes up so this is it's one step up that's nice this freewheel here is 14 to 28 so it's it it's very basic you don't have this huge range and especially kind of missing like a 34 or 36 tooth uh sprocket in the rear for climbing and that's already a really big chain ring you know i think it's like 54 tooth so you know if you made the chain ring smaller that would make it easier to get started and to climb and if you made a, a bigger like sprocket in the rear that would make it easier to climb so the fact that this is kind of limited and that's so big i was like oh what's this going to be like 
No, the thing is, it has smaller wheels. So you, as the pedaler and the motor, get a mechanical advantage because you're not having to turn this really wide wheel. I still think that, they're, that they chose a chain ring that's a little on the big side. I found myself, you know, if I, if I didn't have the help of the motor and I was trying to pedal this up the hill, even in the lowest gear, I would kind of be struggling a little bit. And that's, it's a little bit of a bummer for a bike that's like so off-road oriented with like the, the tires and the suspension and everything like that. So, you know, that's just a comment on some of the hardware. This stuff can be kind of replaced and changed up, but, um, you know, for the most part with this, this kind of motor, this thing is very powerful and it's set up to be pretty zippy. So in the higher levels of assist, it's like, you know, it really takes off. And then the throttle, it's active and it will override assist in one through five. So I, d I never found myself really struggling with it too much. I just would pretty frequently like jump to the throttle rather than trying to pedal my way through. And they've got a pretty decent sensor here too. This is a sealed uh, cadence sensor at the bottom bracket right here. And they've wrapped the wire around so it's not loose. It's kind of nice. Um, in, in the past, I've seen like external cadence sensors with like magnets on them this one is nice because it's just it's tucked away it's clean it's sealed and then there's that support arm for when you're folding it and it sort of complements this chain ring guard on the other side so you're not banging up those teeth uh, and that's something that can't happen as i was pedaling i was keeping my eye on my pants like are they getting snagged are they touching the chain and no it was working it was working pretty well the whole setup is is kind of fun. They got those big aluminum alloy Welgo folding platform pedals, much better than plastic in my opinion. They're a lot sturdier and they give you a bitter, like a larger surface area, which imagine you're in snow or you're on sand and you're wearing boots like me, you know, that you've got extra wide shoes. So having a bigger pedal is nice. That was a great choice by them. Pretty standard on a lot of the other little accessories. Just these are like slip on grips. They aren't locking or anything like that. Um, the saddle it was a brand i hadn't really heard of it's fairly active which is unique because a lot of times especially a bike that's set up with a powerful motor and it's kind of like oh, i'm gonna zip along they they have a bigger saddle with like bumpers to get some comfort and stuff maybe since they're going full suspension and they they feel like this could be more active having a longer seat post means you could like really raise this up and get full leg extension so i, I guess it's okay it's kind of vented gives you some support if you're a man you're not going to get the kind of that uncomfortable feeling and tingling and stuff so yeah, let me just walk around this a little bit more and compliment that they've got a clear sticker slap guard right there. It keeps the paint looking nice. Here are the bosses for adding that optional rear rack. It is going to be an unsprung rear rack. So it's gonna bounce up and down like this versus if it was connected to the main portion of frame. Very minor complaint there because I mean, you know, at least it has a rack option. That's that's pretty cool. And their rack was decent. Like, you know, it, it seemed like it had a bunch of support arms and things that you could clamp a child seat on or maybe put some panniers no bottle cage bosses that i'm seeing on this on this bike anywhere sometimes companies will put them up here but then your bottles you know basically sideways it's going to be dribbling out the whole time occasionally they'll put it down here just to have it which which could be nice for like a folding lock i always ride around with like my backpack so i just sometimes i have a hydration pack or maybe i put my my gear in the backpack um so not such a big deal and i just love that they've got this integrated headlight so this is blaze light it's got two beams they're fairly bright and it's somewhat aimable you can see that the the support arm right here for it the mounting arm is knurled so it has those like slots cut through so it's not gonna pivot side to side as easily but it is on the the sort of the bridge of the suspension fork so that's what goes up and down this is unsprung just like the rack right so ideally you'd have the light somewhere on the frame but still in a way that it could point where you steer which is the case right now maybe up here i i like to have it high especially when you're in a black bike you don't have any like real reflective accents on this bike and you're lower to the ground because of those those tires so maybe it's not an issue because this is sort of an off-road bike and you're on a little adventure on a trail there are no cars but that's an area of potential improvement. Nice plastic cable wrap here with a zipper for all these cables. And there are so many cables because we got the two brakes, we got the display panel up here, we got the trigger shifters, and uh, these are motor inhibitors. Both brake levers have motor inhibitors, which overrides the powerful motor. Excellent, that's really what you need for a cadence sensor bike like this, where you, know, you, you could stop pedaling and there might be a little bit of a delay before the controller actually shuts off. And I think it's a 25 amp controller. So it's a pretty powerful setup Coming back to the, the trigger shifters right here, seven speeds. I like that they're they're this kind of shifter and it's not the big thumb shifter that you see on some other bikes. 
those ones could be a little bit more intuitive and easier to reach if you have gloves on or something they're, they're so big but this one's a little faster and a little sportier kind of complementing that sporty saddle so i like it except for that again we've got the one-way trigger shifter so i have to use my index finger like this and then my thumb like this and sometimes it's nice if you could use your thumb for both shimano does have a trigger shifter that does that i think it's dior it's a little more expensive and at least this has like three steps down so one two three pretty cool like that and then to have like a twist throttle and trigger sh shifters all combined like that that's neat because so many times i'll ask the companies and they have twist throttles or trigger throttles that that have such a big housing that you're not able to put trigger shifters so good job synergy i mean there are a couple things on this bike that are like nice like they really got it working even this little phone holder thing right here it, it worked pretty well i used it on the way over here you just kind of clamp it around your phone it helped me find this park without uh, feeling like I was gonna be fumbling with my phone. My phone did not fall out. It's a minor thing, but it's, it's a nice part. It's fairly useful. Okay, so I'm getting ready to go into the display. You know, we already kind of did the folding thing. I felt like that was pretty standard, kind of what you'd expect. Um, let's see, what else we got here? I think another highlight for me was, you know, in addition to having a wired in headlight, you've got, uh, a little USB charging port below the display. See right there, it's a full size USB type A. I think it's five amp uh, or five volt, one amp. So you could potentially have a little wire here and you could be charging your phone as you ride. And this is a fairly high capacity battery. Again, 48 volts, 14 amp hours, like 672 watt hours. That's sizable and you need it with a higher powered motor, right? And less efficient tires, especially if you lower the PSI. But to be able to tap in with your phone is great. Um, you know, the thing that this bike doesn't have is a rear light unless you get that rack. I have this helmet, Abus gave me this, and it's got like a kind of a light built into the top. So again, up high, it flashes, you know, good things. So, so let's boot this bike up. We press the power button there. Nice, it's like a three inch diagonal dis display, grayscale backlit. And I can turn on backlighting by pressing that power button again. And it's got the headlight icon. So this is this is what those headlights look like. They they kind of got some visibility from the side too. So this is this is a decent choice in my book. When I first saw this, I was like, I'm gonna try to make this visible for you guys. They have power, normal, and eco, and that's sort of like yeah, how efficient the bike is. There are, I've seen this display before from other companies like Pedego, and you can go in and actually set the, the power delivery as eco normal or power. That's not the case here. Synergy's made it kind of simplified where it's like okay pedal assist down here and depending on the level of pedal assist it's going to tell you how efficient the bike is you can't adjust those at least from what i've seen so it starts in pedal assist one be careful that means the throttle is hot so if you turn it on like i just did and then you get on the bike and you touch that throttle it could take off on you and it is powerful so you know you might want to go down to zero if you're getting on and off the bike or just turn off the display zero the throttle is not active you've just got a bike with a light with a nice computer and a charging port Okay, so back here, you'll notice power and normal and eco don't have any checks next to them right now. Speed, it's in kilometers per hour, but I'll show you how to go to miles per hour in a minute. Battery management system, it's showing your voltage right here, so 53.1. Even though it's a 48 volt battery, that's, you know, it's fully charged and the voltage is a little bit higher right now. Five ticks on that battery infographic, which leaves something to be desired, 20% increments. It would be nicer if there were like 10 bars or maybe even just a percentage, but that's just not the case with a lot of e-bike displays like this. And then trip distance, if we press set, we get uh, trip time and then we get odometer. So yeah, it just kind of cycles all the way back through. And then plus and minus, we go all the way up to level uh, five and you can see now power is checked. If I go down to normal, I'm sorry, four, we get normal and it looks like three is also normal and then two and one is eco so that's just again it's sort of telling you in these two modes one and two that's the most efficient it's eco um yeah kind of cool and again i like that it's not super complicated like some of the other displays so again the light you just tap the power button um this does have walk mode so you can hold the minus button and there we go All right that could be very useful if you did get a flat tire or you found yourself trying to climb something that was a little bit just too precarious to ride 
Um, I've dropped the saddle down here right now and that's gonna be a good way to also find some stability and security. You can put your foot down fairly easily or you can jump forward. This is sort of a mid-step frame. It's a little bit lower standover height, but I wanna comment that I've ridden bikes like this before um, with an old girlfriend who we were in Mexico, we were in sand and she kind of jumped off and bumped her knees against this thing because it is such a big joint. Now they need to do that for strength, but you know, there are other folding bikes that have the battery positioned differently. And in this case, you get the big joint. So just be careful not to bump your knees or your shins into that, that joint. Okay. So anyway, um, coming back to just the, the setup, the, the bike right now, that kickstand, it's also done really well. It's in a good location. It's pretty far back. It's not going to cause any pedal lock. Uh, it is adjustable length. It's got its own little tab hanger. It doesn't bump into the disc brake. So again, nice black spokes, black hubs, the, the rims, this is an area where they could go with punched out rims to lighten this bike a little bit more, but that would also potentially raise the price. So this is really, they're trying to get that just right, like the value versus, you know, high-end components. And I think as far as having a suspension, full suspension, having a really good motor, and then, you know, having like all these options for, for drive modes along with hydraulic disc brakes, those that's a lot of check boxes right there, for me at least. Okay, so coming back up to the display, we can get into the settings by holding set, and then you can cycle through uh, the different readouts. So let's see here, I think we could clear the trip distance on that, I just pressed minus. And two, you can change the, I think you can change the top speed right here, so you could lower it if you're someone who wants to go a little slower. I think it's set to like kind of limit at 32 kilometers per hour, 20 miles per hour, because that's the legal like class two um, specification in North America. We press set again, and it looks like we've got the wheel size. So 22 inches or 24 inches. We got it set at 24 because these are fat tires. If it had slimmer tires, they might, it might be closer to 20. And then this is where we, in set four, we go from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. So I'll just leave it on kilometers per hour. And now we're back to the beginning. To get out, you just hold set. And that is it, guys. That's the full overview. I've done my best to be uh, thorough with this thing. Um, it's it's always it's interesting because there are there are so many bikes these days, so many e-bikes. Some of them just kind of look like it's the same frame, but there's really a lot to be said about which components they spec on the bike, right? And and in most most cases with this bike, I mean it's upgraded pedals, upgraded derailleur. Yeah, the the free wheels kind of eh, and maybe the chain rings a little bit bigger than I would have gone with, but almost everything else on this bike is pretty cool. And stow the kickstand and. Let's see, pedal assist level one. Let's see how it does. Put a rattling on that phone holster there. This is really capable for assist level one. I think that's kind of what I was saying earlier that it's set up to be pretty zippy and give you that wow factor. Um, but that, that could also be a little bit alarming if you hop on and you're in level five. Oh boy, I mean, very quickly, whoa, up to 28 kilometers per hour. And there definitely was some delay when I stopped pedaling. Right, and that's why those motor inhibitors are so important on the brakes. Again, just, just using a couple fingers here because they are hydraulic disc brakes. So I appreciate, it's a good setup, but it's a powerful setup and potentially a really good bike for someone who's, who's just a larger person. You're, whether you're heavier or you're taller, this could be a good option as a folding bike or you love that suspension. Now there are ways to make this bike a little bit smoother if you just use that variable speed twist throttle. I've never seen this pattern of throttle before and it kind of, Oh, it looks like the circus or something like that. It sort of matches the grips. So let's do this. We we're in any one of those, you know, five levels of assist. Um, this will work. And Josh was telling me that it, the throttle is set up almost like level four. That he said it doesn't it doesn't get as powerful as if you're an actual level five doing pedal assist. So keep that in mind if you want like full power. So here we go. I'm gonna just gently ease into it. Okay. Yeah. Real real gentle. And of course you can unleash this thing too if you want but i find myself going a little slower when i'm cruising across some of this bumpy terrain like this okay. 
okay, kind of look both ways and do a concrete test. Wow, oh boy, Just trying the no hands thing here. You'd think it'd be really stable because of the fat tires, it sort of tips to the, the right a little bit for me here. But yeah, fat tires are gonna be a good option if you're someone looking for that stability. Okay guys, from here you can see that rear suspension and uh, see how much actual travel it gives you. I'm gonna do some off-road riding. Got that 54 tooth steel chain ring up front with the alloy guard. And then the plastic slap guard, which looks like it could be maybe stuck down a little bit better in this case. It's supposed to be a brand new bike, but I can see how the chain's touching a little bit already. 14 to 28 in the rear. Again, this is a longer frame. I think because of the rear suspension, it just, it, it makes the wheelbase longer. I've got all those measurements back at the site. They're using thicker 12 gauge spokes in the rear for extra strength and it's 32 hole. And then there's 36 holes in the front rim kind of wheel setup and it's 13 gauge. So a little bit narrower, really interesting back to this being like an extra burly, you know, super tough bike. And then they've got a couple of different accessory options. So whether it's the, the aluminum alloy fenders that we saw earlier, they mount here and here but then the fender goes quite a ways without any sort of support. So I'm imagining it could kind of rattle around. Um, you know, I saw the one back at the shop that had the rear rack and the fenders and I just poked around a little bit. The rack seemed really sturdy. It was rated at 55 pounds, 25 kilograms. I'm gonna start out pedaling without any assist in the lowest gear, just to give you some idea of the cadence and, and effort required. This is level two. It's a pretty powerful level two, so I'm gonna go to level one. Pretty noticeable delay uh, with the cadence sensor, uh, which surprises me. I think this is at least a 12 magnet, in, you know, sealed sensor. Might just be the way they've got the controller set up. There's a there's definitely a delay, so nice to have those motor inhibitors on the brakes. Um, now I'm going to go off road a little bit, and you can see that rear suspension working. Might be a good idea to, um, you know, put that gear, uh, it, you know, put the chain into the highest, more largest sprocket in the rear, just to keep it away from the chain stay, so you don't get all the banging that we're seeing here. Otherwise, this it felt really good. It's nice so you don't have to get a suspension seat post to get that comfort uh, for the rear portion of the bike. And this is also going to be easier on your knees because if you're standing up, it, you know, this whole portion of the bike is sprung from the rear and from the front versus just a bike with a front suspension. So I, I like this. This is a pretty fun little bike. So areas for improvement include, you know, adding a little torque arm or something a little bit beefier since it is such a powerful motor. And then maybe shipping this with a derailleur guard. That would protect the motor power cable, which could be a little bit vulnerable if you're going off road and get snagged or something, or if the bike tips over. And this thing is shipped, right? So it's in a box and that's one of the more sensitive parts on the bike. I, I didn't unpack and build this bike, so I'm not sure how well protected it is, but th those are just a couple little comments or thoughts that I had when I was looking at this thing. Well, guys, I've had a fun time cruising around this park, doing a little off-road. Uh, I hope you got all your questions answered and maybe discovered something new. This was a fun bike. I'm doing my best to cover stuff that, uh, you know, is either 
kind of a category leader, something sort of fun and different, or something that you guys specifically request, so you can head head on back to the forums and um, you know make yourself heard or, or leave a comment here. Uh, we've got a really cool comparison tool back at the site, so you could look at this bike and then kind of cross compare it to some of the other folding fat bikes we've covered in the past. Love y'all. I hope you ride safe. You're doing well. We'll see you in the next one.